You know, if you ever want to be considered a real YouTuber, a real FPS king of the genre, Jiffy, you better do a Quake video. Is this something we need to, like, talk about right now while I'm driving, while I'm trying to not create manslaughter on the roads? I don't want to end up like, Oh, you're going to go with a Matthew Broderick reference right here? Nobody even cares about him anymore. What was Ferris Bueller's Day Off, like, 40 years ago? Grow up, King Jiffy. I mean, I do not need weirdly around erotic Cortana with a high-pitched voice to come in and tell me what I do and do not need to make on my channel. I mean, everyone's made a Quake video. Just go look up one of theirs. We are tabling this argument because I am done with you right now. Three hours later. What you doing, King Jiffy? Well, dumbass, if you take note at my lawn right now, you'll notice that I have a lot of grass growing, which means I need to go mow my lawn like a self-respecting adult. You can mow your lawn anytime a real man would play Quake. Seriously? Seriously, you two? I have not even played your game for the channel. Who do you think you are thinking you could come to my game and save my babes when you haven't even beat Quake? Alright, idiot. It's time for you to just leave me alone. I'm going to mow my lawn and then we'll then we'll talk about this issue, okay? I just have shit to do. Look at this fat idiot weed eating his entire lawn because his lawnmower broke down. What a moron. I mean, if he ever wants to look like me, he needs to lose some weight. Then and probably like 80 pounds of steroids, you small penis freak. You're the equivalent of an e-girl, you holographic whore. You know, you're kind of a misogynistic pig piece of shit, you know that? Did you say pig cops? Where are the pig cops? I gotta save my babes. I'll be out of here. Remember to tell King Jiffy to play Quake. Listen, King Jiffy, I understand that life gets in your way and you have a lot to do and on a daily basis you work so hard but quake is important for your channel as important as stopping your uh, back porch from assaulting your forehead for the future i think this will be betterment for all of society god you look stupid you want quake fine i'll give you quake you broke me down you beat me down and you didn't even beat me off so quake originally started as a DD character for carmax a DD group and he thought well i will put a little tidbit in this idea that i'm gonna make an rpg game where he's gonna have a hammer of lightning or justice or some crap and i'll put a little tidbit at the end of my commander keem game a commander keem if you don't know what that is is a little side scroller that it had made in the early 90s and if you really want to get down to brass What's really interesting about Commander Keem is Commander Keem is the grandson of BJ Blazkowicz, who is the father of the Doom guy. Yeah, the Doom guy from Doom 1 and 2. It's a little bit of like insider lore for you. John Carmack and Romero argued about it on Twitter once, so that means it's 100% factual. And if you don't believe me, you can suck on my willy, suck on my little willy. And what does this have to do with Quake? Not really much at all, other than that one little tidbit where they put him in the end credits saying, ah, oh, Quake guy will show up. Well, they decided they were going to make a 3D engine after the success of Doom 1 and 2. Carmack, Romero, American McGee, they were all riding high on the cock, right on the top of that horsey. Not on horse cock, though. This is not a Vosh stream. And when Quake was starting to be developed on this 3D engine, it had strayed completely different than what it was originally supposed to be because Quake was originally going to be a third-person RPG game where you got, like I said, a hammer of, like, lightning and all these different powers. And even before the 3D engine, this was the idea. This was the forefront of what they were going to do, and they knew that they didn't have the technology at the ready to be able to do this. And even after the 3D engine, they decided to move in a completely different direction. But you can still feel the vibes of that RPG. RPG uh, fantasy build in Quake. There's a lot of this game that feels 100% super authentically RPG fantasy game. It feels like Berserk kind of in times. I mean, you, you run up into this castle and you're like, yeah, this could have been a fantasy game. You know, King Jiffy, just because a game has a castle in it does not mean it's fantasy inspired. <sighs> God damn it, I hate you so much. Yes, I understand that you need more than a castle to make a game dark fantasy, but this game fully engulfed in dark fantasy. Every level is just dripping it. And yes, there are a lot of sci-fi components in this game, and you are kind of transported into these different zones through these little teleporters, which then add this kind of feel like you're uh, bouncing around this other dimension that has fantasy elements in it, as well as some deep Lovecraftian elements. Oh yes, Lovecraft, my area of expo Tears. I am Cthulhu, the grandchild of Shubnigaroth, the very antagonist of this game, I might let you know. 
God, Cthulhu is such a pompous ass. Get out of here, bro. Don't you have, like, the minorities to hate or something? I don't know. I've read Lovecraft, and it's all like, ooh, weird squid people. Did I mention I don't like brown people? Anyways, back to the actual game, if we can get on topic. God, so many interruptions. But as I was saying on the aesthetic of this game, 100% fantasy meets Lovecraft, and they couldn't have melded it any better. Now, in my little bit of knowledge that I've dived into with Lovecraft and all jokes aside about him being racist I think his ideas were incredibly profound and I like the way that this game kind of took some of those elements but didn't go full into it they they had an idea where they were like we want to do dark fantasy but we know that we want to keep with this future aesthetic vibe that we've already set in stone with Doom because why wouldn't you why wouldn't you if you had just made Doom and Doom 2 and broken the world everyone was going crazy over these games the fact that they was hitting mainstream news about how it was too violent and it was causing people to go all hibbly jibbly and video games and violence are too horrible all sorts of stupid rhetoric had popped up about this game which only made the game more popular which seems to happen every time a game has a lot of drama whether it's forced or whatever look at uh, Hogwarts Legacy just a little bit of the tie-in to the creator of Hogwarts and all the people mad because the game is just uh, has to be transphobic oh it has to do with JK Rowling so it's transphobia and that game sold better than anyone thought it was going to sell not just because millennials decide instead of by using their star sign they use what house they belong to but also the fact that people were just buying the game despite these idiots that were making noise for no reason it has so much power when when you look at the the drama that can pop up it makes you want to play it even more so after this huge blowout success of these first two games of course they're going to stay with this theme and by god they did except for this time they were going full 3d because like i said earlier they had made a 3d engine and before they were using mind trickery jedi mind and knights like you this is the 3d you are looking for there is nothing about wolfenstein or doom that is true 3d the fact that they were able to pull that out of their ass is just truly remarkable but this game was like screw that noise we are going full three-dimensional and it, it was perfect it was so great when you get into this game it looks so much more ahead of its time you would think that there was ton tons of time between this and doom 2 but really there was only two years just put that in your mind for a second two goddamn years now i've been in two different console generations now in this modern age the ps4 and then the ps5 or the Xbox One and the Xbox Series X, and they look not that much different. Uh, technology hasn't jumped that far. But you look at the jumps that were happening in the 90s, god damn, baby! God damn! This was like... A world's different from the the games. I mean, you would look at the two games, you wouldn't even think you were looking at the same generations. But this was all happening simultaneously. And at the same time as this, we were getting build engine games that were almost feeling like they were combining 3D with the 2D elements. It was so cool. The innovations that were happening during this time period, she's baby. This was skibbity toilet on your anus. And not to say that the development of this game was absolutely perfect, because people in this company were having the rock star mentality, mainly. American McGee and John Romero it got so bad with John Romero and I know everybody's heard this story a million times and I'm just milking the same dead horse but you look at the idea that he made an algorithm to track how much work that Romero was doing because he thought he was slacking too hard and he thought everybody had to work as hard as him which he said in interviews he would later regretted because all of the stress in this game led to Romero and McGee going their separate right ways from its software Romero going and making Daika Tana, Daikatana, and American McGee went on to make it that Alice game, which is just, oh, so nice. And I think if they would have all kept working together, even the games that were bad that American McGee made and John Romero, they would have been so much better if they would have stayed together. But I think this is the master class on why they were better when they were together, is looking at this game right here. Because even though they had their disagreements throughout this entirety of making this game, where some people would come in and scrap levels, and new people were coming in, and there was a bunch of, like, in fighting about Quake, but the end product that they released here was so legendary and changed the scenery for video games for years to come. If it wasn't for Quake and Duke Nukem really shaking up the environment, who knows where we'd be today? I don't know. I don't want to live in that world. The idea that this game even is one of the big pushing front forefronts of multiplayer shooters, the idea of rocket jumping in this high-paced arena combat, which is something I grew up loving because I was 
was a huge Halo nerd when I was getting my original Xbox as a kid. The uh, Family Nights, where we were all sitting around playing Halo together, and the arena-style combat is based off of something like this. So the fact that this game influenced what I would later credit is the reason I love video games at all, the game that truly changed my idea of what fun could be, the fact that this game did that is just so remarkable and so amazing, and I, I owe so much credit to what this game is. Are you sure that you just didn't like Halo because of my thick, juicy, voluptuous- Nope, 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 that's enough of Cortana for the day. You are getting locked in a closet somewhere with like 16 deadbolts. You have officially ruined your fun that you can have in this video. God damn it, why does she keep showing up? But this game really uh, heightened the whole gaming sphere at this time, much like Duke Nukem in the same vein. Now, I feel like I have mentioned Duke Nukem a lot in this, but it has to be said that this and Duke Nukem carried the 90s into the forefront of what would then be Half-Life and Halo, and that really changed the landscape of what would be today. I mean, do you think we would have gotten Call of Duty or anything like that if these guys hadn't shown the popularity that could be amassed from this genre, and how the multiplayer scene was blowing up much bigger than anyone thought it truly could? Absolutely not! That's why this game has to be appreciated like a goddamn fine scotch, baby. Swirl it up in the glass, smell it like one of those weird dweebs, and then just shoot it. Shoot it right in front of all those pompous assholes who think that it needs to be, like, savored. We need to savor this. Nah, baby, I'm gonna throw my girl up on the counter, fill her belly button with some expensive scotch. <laughs> But that just means that there was something special here. That's it. Even if you're going to run through this game, or if you want to play each level and find every secret, this is the game for you, man. This has everything you could want. And this is actually the remaster that I'm playing here, so it has even more content, which I haven't even dipped the tip of my penis into. I haven't fondled even the slightest bit of that clit of what this uh, remaster has in terms of excess, because I was just going in to play the, the original Quake experience, baby. That's all I wanted was that original quake experience to see what this game was all about to see if I, I vibed with it and actually i actually played further in this game than i ever did doom and i like doom and i actually played even more of doom 2 when i was a kid because it was on my grandpa's computer and i just loved that game but i kept finding myself jumping from doom and going and playing shadow warrior because i thought shadow warrior was just that much more cool he just had better uh, graphics better vibes he was funnier so when i jumped into this game i truly wasn't sure what to expect was i getting another doom was I getting a uh, fantasy dark doom? I, I didn't know. Maybe it was just like a doom shade, but I didn't know all the intricate details between what went on to make this 3D engine to truly bring a true 3D game to the masses. And in software was like, yeah, we're coming to fuck, baby. And I love that in the energy in this game, it has that. It is there. It is here to tell you it does not play around. The enemy design is just so meaty and juicy. Something that the 2D sprites just couldn't replicate and I think that some of the jibs you knock off of people in some of those 2D games are just glorious but there is somehow the ability to make this game even like juicier and jibbier Give it! <laughs> And I think the level design truly elevates it from what they had done with Doom. Because everything in Doom is just kind of red. It's very, very red. And I understand it's trying to go for a very hell motif, but after a while you get kind of fed up with it in a way. I mean, Doom's level design is fantastic and the actual maps and what you can find in them truly elevated what FPS games were in the past because it felt like every other FPS game was just a long linear maze through a bunch of labyrinths that you gotta shoot stuff sometimes. But when you play Doom, it was actually good level design but this game looked at doom and was like yeah but it was kind of really red now let's try to make things feel different let's actually make it feel like the player when he finds something he doesn't have to backtrack and feel lost because everything looks very very different and it feels like you never actually get too lost in this game on top of that the true verticality you get in this game compared to everything else at that time trust me i played po'd which came out in like this era and dear god some of the verticality that you'd get in stupid fps games of that era was all Awful. The try the the attempts at platforming was just so bad that you want to rip your own nutsack hair off and then use it to floss your teeth and that would be a more fun experience than trying to get to the platform to progress the level. But in this game, everything flows so well. The movement is so fluid. It feels like I can jump back into this and it doesn't feel like a lot of old games does, which feels like you're covering yourself in oil and going down a luge. Later, dudes. Let her rip. Hang pen.
trust me, I played PO'd, which is a game that Night Dive had remastered as well, and I don't think it's Night Dive's fault that the game turned is that way or was that way. It's just the fact that that game was made in a time where everything seemed to feel like you were just shooting across the map or either trudging through cum. Everything just felt like ice skates on hell, and I don't know why, but this game I can jump back into and Doom as well, and I don't feel like I'm just kind of floating all over the place. Everything feels intentional. The platforming feels fluid, and I love the fact that I can jump into this, and it feels so great. And this has to be how the people in the 90s felt when they first jumped into this game after playing all these different shooters, because I'm sure they were hungry. I bet they were starving, just like I am on modern consoles when they drip feed me FPS games. But they had this idea that, oh, well, the, the, the everything's gonna be slick and annoying, but I gotta get used to it. Not this game. It was like, boom, you're there. And everything's moving with such perfection that you're not getting pulled out of the game to really reaccompany yourself with this terrible movement. This game just doesn't have that. And I thought it would have just like some little hiccups here and there due to it being such an old game, but I was uh, so profoundly surprised and so happy when it came to the movement in this game and how great it felt. And I haven't even tried rocket jumping, which was a, a happy accident when it came to this game. Even John Romero was like, when they first saw it, they're like, oh my god, is this game breaking? And then they saw people having so much fun with it and the different skill ceiling where you could actually rocket jump off the ground and then rocket jump off the wall to get even more height in uh, these multiplayer matches. It was just such a cool idea in the physics from this engine allowed that happen, which opened the door to uh, oh, so many games having rocket jumping, and even in Halo, one of my favorite games, in Halo 2, you can skip half of the second level by just grenade hopping on top of the building. It's cool shit like that that was birthed from this, and it's so insane that they were able to make an engine that had cool enough movement that you could even make it cooler by adding in coolness. I know I've said cool so much, but it's just so exciting to see something like this and to know that this was a piece of history, but it's still holds up. And the fact that it's such a hard formula to master, I've been trying to play Wrath, right? Wrath was built on this engine, and I don't think Wrath even has a, a, a speck, an even little teeny, insy, mitzy, mitzy bit of the fun that was in this game. I think Wrath has some good qualities, but this game truly showed what fun could be had, and I feel like the imitators in this genre will never truly get the greatness that was this game without at least trying to heighten it to a new level, or trying to do something different. If Like, Wrath, my biggest problem that game is it feels like a Quake clone but not as good and that's the problem with a lot of games when it comes to this boomer shooter era is they're trying to replicate this instead of trying to heighten the genre in its new direction now some games do but the games that I really get annoyed with is when I jump into it and it's like ah it just kind of feels like a clone because it's very rare for an imitation to outclass the original OG badass and it, this is one of the prime examples of that I mean I haven't even gotten to the guns yet and that's one of the best features of this game. I think this game puts Doom's arsenal really, really in its wake. I mean, everything in this game, it has Doom's shotgun, but I think it does it better. The grenade launcher is actually good. Now, I don't know if you know this, but there's a few guns in games that can be either done absolutely wrong or absolutely right, and the grenade launcher is one of them. I've played so many games where the grenade launcher is just fucking booty cheeks, and I can't tell you how many times I've been excited to pick up a grenade launcher and find out it's just terrible to the point that when I pick up a grenade launcher in games, it's so 50-50 for me where I just try to avoid it. But this game, thankfully, has a wonderful grenade launcher, and when it does get upgraded to the rocket launcher, I think the rocket launcher performs very very, very well. If I had one gripe about this game, I don't really like the look of the rocket launcher. It kind of just looks like a penis with like vents in it. I don't know. It's just odd. It just is an odd penis shaped thing that it works really well, but not a fan of the art design. On the opposite side of that, you have the spiker and then the ultimate spiker. This ultimate spiker is the coolest goddamn gun ever ever put in a game. Did you see me just melt that shambler? And the way that it has like multiple barrels and it just kind of rotates almost like a Gatling gun? So freaking sick, dude. It's so amazing. And even like the Tesla cannon is such a well-designed weapon. And it just kind of almost every gun in this game I love except for the rocket launcher. But at the end of the day, when there's one gun in your entire arsenal that I think is kind of mid-looking, but it still functions fantastic, that's pretty par for the course. And honestly, I played games where the majority of the guns suck. I'm looking at you, Dead Space 1, but only one gun was good. And this game is just like almost every gun at least functions perfectly. And only one I had problems with. That's a winning fucking lottery ticket right there if I ever had one. 
And the aesthetic of the enemy design in this game is truly next level. What they were doing in Doom, like with the hell monsters, they they didn't seem in this game where I ever felt like I was fighting more of Doom enemies. The closest could be the guy that I just killed on screen there. He kind of reminds me of the soldiers, but he um, reacts and acts so much different with his melee attacks that he feels like an own iconic thing from Quake and not just like a recycled Doom character put in 3D. Which even companies that I enjoy, such as Bungie, when they made Halo, there's a lot of of overlap between their last FPS game Marathon and Halo's enemies. It feels like there's a lot of reuse there. But when I play Quake, the closest thing being that guy and then maybe the zombies, but the zombies function so much differently that you don't even think of them being similar to Doom zombies at all. It's kind of impressive how they were able to make this feel so much different. Because truly, when you look at even the enemies that functions like the, the elementals and stuff, you have a completely different designed monster here that floats. Yeah, it flies, but it doesn't feel like the elemental or anything of that nature. I love the fact that they really went through and said, yeah, we're making something completely different here. When you play this, this is iconically quick. This, yeah, yeah, we made Doom, but you're, they're playing something different now. And they came to make a statement. I think they did with the enemy design because it feels as much like the environmental storytelling as the, and it creates this sense of immersion that you really feel in every level because of the way the game works. And the way this game kind of puts you in this dance it's almost like a waltz through each level with the enemies how you really experience each one in a different way in terms of things of what weapons do the best damage against these monsters how i i need to use my rockets or my grenade launcher to disperse the zombies otherwise they will gather up and make your life kind of annoying because when you shoot a zombie down it gets back up and tries to eat your bussy so hard and then when you're looking at like oh these running guys the the guys with the chainsaws and throw the grenades the best way to take care of them is to pull out your spike launcher and just kind of like sidestep until you kill them it's just a, a wonderful dance of rhythm and motion throughout this game and it's held together not just with the level design in the enemies but also the movement in the it just perfectly atmospheric wonderful gameplay that you just can't get enough of and you want to just keep stewing in it in every goddamn second one of the reasons why i think uh doom eternal is so much better than doom 2016 because doom 2016 when yes it is a good game and it feels more like an older shooter doom eternal really gets that waltz down gets that idea that you have to bounce around and really know each enemy and how how it functions and know the best way to disperse it and uh, doom eternal becomes this waltz and i feel like this game is the best example to show that yeah they've done this before with quake and it's just id software redoing it in a modern age and i know that's probably going to be a hot take but the idea that this game functions so much in the same idea of how this is just this perfect symphony of movement and gunning and how doom eternal is a perfect symphony of moving and gunning and i mean also doom eternal has like an undisclosed cocaine addiction with its movement speed and that's a big determining differentiation between these two not to mention like style and everything like that i know there's a ton of differences but at the core i do feel they have a lot in common in terms of how they feel so fluid and it's just something that i've only experienced with old id games and the modern id games not the weird rage bullshit in the middle i don't know what they were doing with rage but it was not good the fact that the weird mad max game with the arkham combat shits over rage in combat style and i don't even like the arkham style combat it's one of my least favorite combat systems ever made but god is rage terrible i also like how this game can instill fear even though it's so fast paced it's one of those things that i wasn't sure i i was going to feel the actual atmosphere this horror atmosphere they were going for until i met that son of a bitch on screen right now the shambler is absolutely terrifying every time this guy shows up he has the most annoying hit scanning attack of all time and i realized right here that i was in the water and i needed to fucking kick rocks because if you get shocked while you're in the water you're dead also this game is kind of funny there's one part in the game in particular toward the end where it gives you the tesla rifle in the water and you know what it's doing there it knows you're gonna fire it at the stupid fish trying to kill you and insta kill yourself it knew what it was doing goddamn assholes over at id software if i did have one massive gripe now 
I don't consider the rocket launcher a massive gripe. It was more of a nitpick. The massive gripe I have in this game is I think the underutilization of bosses. You don't really fight any bosses in this game whatsoever. And that's kind of a letdown for me. I mean, yeah, the shambler could be considered a boss, but I more see him as an annoying enemy that shows up that is a badass. More like a mini boss per se. Even even when you get to Shug Niggeroth at the end of the game and you're like, yeah, this is gonna be sick, I'm gonna have a boss fight, and he's throwing shamblers and the weird crab guys at you, and you're like, yes, this is it. Only to jump inside of it using a teleporter and then it blows up. It's just so anticlimactic, especially with how cool Shug Niggeroth looks, and you're just kind of standing there smiling like, oh yeah, and then text rolls onto the screen, telling you basically, oh, look at you, you did it, you're so badass, you teleported inside one of the great ones, one of the greatest Lovecraftian horrors to ever exist. Yes, I understand that when Lovecraft brought up Shug Niggurath inside of his little, like, uh, mythos, he really didn't say much about him, and it was the mythos that then created Shug Niggurath into this, like, big, uh, monster that was, like, so badass, and to this day, there still isn't a ton of lore about this, so it's kind of funny, I don't know where they just decided, we're doing this monster for this game, because maybe it's because there was so little knowledge about it, but the fact that it's the grandmother of Cthulhu means that it's all powerful. I mean, shit, they had to hit Cthulhu with a goddamn ship just to kill him, and then when I fought Cthulhu in Forgive Me Father, I had to use all my rockets and basically all my ammunition while dodging every goddamn hell he could throw at me, so then when I played this, I don't know, it just felt underwhelming to just teleport inside of him using a spike ball and blow him up from the inside side at least in chasm i gotta actually jump inside and shoot at the monster's heart i don't know this was just super let down for me especially when everything leading up to this fight it just seemed so cool every little tidbit of story you would get wasn't great but it was like yeah yeah there's shug niggeroth's gonna tear up the universe it's gonna send all of these its minions after you because shug niggeroth is sending them they're gonna be bad and it's funny because like i do like the idea that they use shug niggeroth and this might be why they use them because it's like the god of fertility in that universe so maybe it's just using its fertile genes to spit out all of these monsters onto your face just blast in every direction like you get a monster you get a monster here's a monster for you and you have to just clear all these son of a bitches up and i like that idea but the fact that the whole game is this idea that there's this big evil terror that you're going to have to face eventually only to really not face them to just kind of fight the same enemies you fought throughout the game i don't know very unceremonious and what was kind of a stinker on what could have or what is a fantastic and wonderful experience one of the biggest letdowns i have ever had in a game not that it makes this game worse by any means it was just kind of uh what that's it really and i get that they've added in levels where they have different boss fights and stuff but the original release i think that would have hit me kind of a in a weird way it would have put me in a kind of i why dude well we had all this momentum you gave me all these ideas i had this thought of a boss fight in my head and when i was taking out those guys with my juicy guns and i was so scared for my life because this game is difficult I, i'm not trying to pretend i played it on a fairly easy difficulty because i'm a controller slob and i actually played this using cloud gaming i know what a horrible person i am but sometimes i like to watch tv with my wife and play games on the side and you try playing quake on a harder difficulty using a cloud gaming device not fun so i played this on easier setting but the, it's still a pretty difficult game when i try to play this on the harder settings i get my ass straight handed to me so to have all of this cool stuff in the end of level just throw so many of the big bad guys at you and then you just teleport inside somebody while it teleports a bunch of enemies at you i don't know man i don't know not great especially when i thought with the arena it gave me i was going to be shooting it and like actually attacking it all the way up so that boss fight took me a few times because I was treating it like a regular boss fight for a while and then I noticed the stupid spike cube going around its head and I was like wait what is that and every time I'd run up to the teleporter porter I thought it would teleport me into a new area to fight and it kept teleporting me to lava and I only did that about two times I'm not a complete a novice idiot over here but I did start to notice that wow maybe that I should pay attention to that orb and sure enough it kept going inside of Shug Niggurath and I'm like am I teleporting inside of this thing and I know what you're thinking whoa you You've been around for how many years and you didn't know how that's how quake ended yeah no i didn't know shit about this game it 
was honestly something I did not know about until a couple years ago that Quake was even a thing. I had been living in the dirt. I was a Halo guy, dude. Oh, if it wasn't Halo, I didn't care. And then when Doom 2016 came out, I'm like, maybe I should check out, go back and play these old Doom games. Because I remember liking Doom too. And now I'm a goddamn fiend for its software. Goddamn sitting on my knees like, please daddy, give me more. Not really, but still I am. And when I got to that, it just, the, everything was so cool, so perfect, and then dropped the goddamn ball, and I know I'm harping on this, but it was just such a uh, moment on what is actually one of my favorite gaming experiences I have ever played. I don't think it's big enough for me to look back and not love this game, because when I was making this video, to be honest with you, I didn't remember how I was so upset about the boss fight. It was just kind of in the moment thing, and when I brought it up, I was like, oh yeah, it was kind of cringe, but when I look at the rest of this experience from the beginning to the end, I don't feel like it falters, um, really at all. It doesn't really even stumble at any part. And I think maybe a boss fight would have broke up the symphony of movement that they had It's this kind of back and forth that I have with this dialogue and the fact that the game is so wonderful It has that ability to make me think uh, Maybe it would have been better, but maybe it's just perfect on its own Which is a merit to this game the fact that I'm willing to even look over some of my biggest criticisms Which would be fully ruining an experience for me if it was a lesser game because I played some decent games but the fact that I got so bored of the combat throughout the entire experience and I'm looking at a lot of the stuff from the 360 generation where it just seems like I'm doing the same thing over and over again and I don't really feel like I'm moving that much or changing that much or a cover fire games were real bad about this where I just felt like I was stuck in this boring slog of an experience and even though there were moments of fun and then they would have like insanely good boss fights I felt like I was hampered down by the core gameplay and the fact that this core gameplay never felt tired never felt boring I always was on my toes makes me overlook the fact that the boss fight was kind of just a whatever type bullshit it was one of those things that I would look anyone in the eye and say quake is near perfect and you should play it now a fucking it's on game pass if you have PC if you have Xbox download the bitch and play it if you don't have a game an Xbox but you have game pass use fucking cloud gaming play this shit on your phone get a backbone controller or something just play quake it's something you need to do it's so wonderful even if you don't have game pass of any means and you play on playstation this game is constantly cheap so do yourself a favor and download it and that's really the best advice i could ever give you because it's a wonderful experience wonderful environment it made me so hard that my wife almost got pregnant a second time and we're not ready for that shit yet i am barely dealing with the child i got now actually i'm killing it i'm a fucking great Great dad. But spam the comments with what you thought about this game. What was your feeling the first time you played Quake? I want to hear about it. And make sure to share and like this video as many times as possible because I put some work into this. I do a good job, goddammit. I try really hard. I have to wring my underwear out of the sweat that I create when making each one of these videos. And I know that makes you so horny when I say that. But goddammit, you should show your love down in the comments and likes below. Make sure to send this to your grandma or don't that would be really weird considering i'm kind of crude but until then i'll catch you on the next one